Is your payment method silently draining your company's efficiency and you don't even realize it? If so, you've got a lot of company. All of a sudden, most companies, especially ones who pride themselves on being best practice, are aggressively looking for alternatives to paper checks. Unsurprisingly, they are turning in droves to ACH payments and P cards as the logical alternatives. But which one should you use? As you can probably guess, the answer is both. But the trick is to figure out which option to use for which type of payment. Make sure we, you stick around until the end when we share a few times when you should not use ACH. A quick note before we get started. I'm sure you want to know why you should bother to listen to me. I've been working in this space for a long time and have produced over 600 videos for this channel, written 20 business books, numerous CPA, CPE courses designed especially for accounting, finance, and accounts payable professionals just like you. So rest assured, I have a little bit of knowledge and I think you're in the right place. Let's start off by taking a look at P cards. Now, before we discuss which type of payments are appropriate for P cards, I'd like to present you with a few caveats when considering cards. Number one, it goes without saying that you can only use cards or ACH as a pay payment mechanism for that matter if your upfront controls are airtight. If you still have checks that are being vo voided before they are sent because there is a problem with the check, you need to fix that problem before you use one of these payment methods that we're about to discuss. Number two, Additionally, you can only use cards for payments if your supplier takes credit cards. If they don't, it may be a non-starter. Notice I say maybe, not isn't a non-starter. Ever had a supplier hesitate when you mention P cards? There's a subtle strategy that we're going to discuss that can turn that maybe into a yes, and it's easier than you think. That's because if you have more than an occasional payment with them, you may be able to suggest that they start a card program and gently push them in that direction. Some organizations have a policy of only paying for certain items with a card. If the supplier doesn't take cards, they go someplace else. That's another subtle strategy. If you're purchasing a large amount for, from that supplier, the potential loss of business may be just enough to prod them to start a card program. Number three, you might be surprised to learn that some, some suppliers love cards, but others not so much. Here's why. Realize that when you pay with a card, the supplier has to pay a fee to accept the payment in that manner. So if you pay a $100 invoice, for example, in all likelihood, they will get something like $97. While most don't mind the fee on smaller payments, some are not so happy to pay that fee on a larger payment. Even if the card issuer offers a specialty product with a lower fee, the supplier accepting the payment may not be pleased. Number three, for this reason, never pay a supplier with an ACH if you know that ultimately you're going to pay that supplier with a card product. They'll be furious as they've gotten used to the convenience of receiving the ACH payment, and now on top of losing that, they have to pay a fee to the card provider. Why might you want to make card payments? When we look at the payment issue from the accounts payable standpoint, from their viewpoint, cards provide a convenient way to eliminate some invoices from the accounts payable process. This frees up some of your human resources to focus on invoices that are larger, where an error has the potential to cause serious financial damage. Let's face it, most companies would prefer their processes spend more time reviewing a $100,000 invoice than one for $500. How are you currently handling your small dollar invoices? I'd love to know, and you can let us know in the comments below. So which payments typically are appropriate for cards, assuming all the proper controls are in place? The first group of payments, the first group of invoices, I mean, best suited for the cards are small dollar invoice. And most organizations, at least before they start a, pro, a card program have tons of them. In fact, it's not unusual to find the old 80-20 rule in play here with 80% of the invoices covering only 20% of the spend. That's right. How you define a small dollar invoice will vary from organization to organization. Let's say you pick $500 as your limit. Once you've covered every possibility, consider raising the limit, say to $750 or even $1,000 or whatever your organization is comfortable with. You can repeat the process several 
times until you reach a dollar limit that the organization is not comfortable with using a card. Or maybe you're getting pushed back from your suppliers. Don't forget, periodically, say once a year, go back to organizations who are sending you small dollar invoices and were not taking cards when you first approached them to see if that has changed. The other group of payments where cards can really help is with recurring payments. In fact, they can sometimes be set up or to automatically go through. Recurring payments can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on you ha how you handle them. Let's make sure they work in your favor. The only caution is to make sure your controls are strong, and these controls should include a process to notify accounts payable when the recurring payment should stop. You'd be surprised how often that doesn't happen. Sometimes this step is overlooked and the payment continues and the supplier neglects to say anything, or perhaps they just didn't even notice. Okay, so you've decided to go the P-card route for certain transactions, but which ones? I'm not talking about whether to choose a MasterCard or a Visa or American Express. I'm talking about which variant of the Claude. To clarify this issue for us, we invited Lynn Lawson to provide a clear explanation so you would have all the facts you need uh, to make that all important decision. You can watch her explain using the link that we've included in the description. So now, what about ACH? Which payment should you try and convert to ACH? With few exceptions, and these are important and we'll address them in a bit, you can try and get every other payment made with ACH. That's right. In Mary's dream world, where sadly none of us reside, every payment would be made with either a card or an ACH and perhaps an occasional wire transfer. The only limitation on this other group would be how fast you can get your suppliers converted if they say they're willing to accept ACH payment. Now, before we get to those payments which can't be made with ACH, it's important you realize that there are some that can't. If you're getting value from this talk and want more like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. This helps us grow the channel, which allows us to create more talks like this for you. So what can't be paid with ACH? If you've purchased a house or a condo or a co-op recently, you may have noticed that the instructions from the lender included directions for your down payment for a wire transfer and were very explicit saying that the, those payments could not be made with ACH. ACH uh, payments were not acceptable for this. This is because of the finality of payment issue. Because ACH payments can be recalled for a very short period of time after the payment has been made. Made, they are not suitable for purchases where there is a change in title or other potential large loss if the transaction were to be reversed. Did you know that ACH isn't a one-size-fits-all solution? There are four different options. With four different options, choosing the right one could mean the difference between uh, smooth sailing and not so much. So once you've decided on ACH, which one of the four options should you use? We recently did a short talk explaining the differences so you can make the right choice for you. You can watch um, that, ex that explanation now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.